Good afternoon, guys. I am Adewale Eke, like you already know, and in today's class, we are still going to continue on the subject matter. The topic of the day is still covenant. In our previous class, I told you about the two types of covenant, parity and society, and I also told you about the fact that a covenant of parity can be conditional or unconditional, and a covenant of society can be conditional or unconditional. Now, in today's class, we are going to talk about the covenant between God and Abraham. In our previous class, we talked about the covenant between God and Noah, which I told you is styled or dubbed or nomenclatured the Noahic covenant. Now, the covenant between God and Abraham is called the Abrahamic covenant. Now, Abraham, as we all know, was previously known as Abraham. Now, Abraham was the son of a man called Sarah. It simply means that the father of Abraham was called Sarah. Now, Abraham had two brothers, according to the Bible, they were Nahor and Aram. Now, pay attention. The brother of Abraham called Aram. This name Aram doubles as the city that Abraham lived when God called Abraham when Abraham was 75 years old. Pay attention. Abraham was 75 years old when he was called by God when he lived in the city of where? Aram. A brother to Abraham is also called Aram. Aram was the father of the nephew of Abraham who left Aram with Abraham called Lot. Now, the Bible says that Abraham was married to a woman known as Sarah. Abraham was married to Sarah. And when he was 75 years old, God told him to leave his father's house, to leave his city, and go to a land which he will show him. And that land was called Canaan. The land was called Canaan. Now, the Bible says that Abraham left Aram. Abraham left Aram with his wife and his nephew called Lot. And they journeyed to Canaan. Now, at this time, the Canaanites, the Canaanites, lived in Canaan. Now, so, Abraham got to Canaan and passed through Canaan. It's normal. For instance, you go to pay a visit to your friend, and you know that your, the parents to that your friend do not like you with that your friend. And you see the parents outside. And instead of knocking on your friend's door, you pass by like you were not going to your friend's house. That was what happened. Abraham felt it was unsafe for him to stay in, in Canaan because the Canaanites at that time dwelt in Canaan. Now, so Abraham passed by Canaan. And the Bible says that he journeyed to the east of a place called Bethel. Now, pay attention. Bethel is the city that was formerly called Luz. Luz was renamed Bethel by Jacob. Now, the Bible says Abraham got to the east of Bethel, where he pitched a tent. He lived there. And to the east of this place where Abraham stayed is the place of Ai. The place that Abraham pitched his tent, Bethel was to the west of this place. The place was to the east of Bethel. Are you following me? Now, before Abraham pitched his tent in this place, Abraham got to Shechem, that is when he passed by, when he passed through Canaan. He got to Shechem. At Shechem, in the Oak of More, at where? Shechem, in the Oak of More. God appears to Abraham and told him, Unto thy descendants, thy means your. Unto thy descendants, I will give this land. And Abraham erected an altar to the Lord at where? Shechem, in the oak of More. Are you following me? Now, eventually, when Abraham pitched his tent here, he consequently moved 
to Negev. So from the east of Bethel, Abraham moved to where? Negev. To where? Negev. At this time, his name was not Abraham. His name was what? Abraham. And his wife's name was not Sarah. Her name was Sarai. Now, the everything I've just mentioned here can be found in Genesis 12, 1 to 9. And then this is the, we can simply call it or title it the early life of, or the, the call of Abraham. Eventually, in the course of our scheme for this topic, we were, we were moved to the covenant that God had with Abraham. Now, God called Abraham when he was 75. 75 years. Now, eventually, God had a covenant with Abraham when, he was, when Abraham was 99 years. Now, the Bible says that God called Abraham and told him, Walk before me and be blameless. I repeat. Walk before me and be blameless. I will make you a father of a multitude of nations. Walk before me and be blameless. I will make you a father of a multitude of what? nations. And the Bible says that before this time, Abraham was unable to have a child. Abraham and his wife Sarah were unable to have a child. Now, Sarah, the wife of Abraham, had a handmaid. She had a handmaid. Handmaid. In today's world, we call a handmaid house girl or a helper. And the name of this handmaid was Anna. Now, when Abraham and Sarah were unable to have a child, Abraham went into Agar, the aunt made of who? Sarai, and they had a child called Ishmael. Now, eventually, when God told Abraham that he will have a child with Sarah, that it is from this child that a multitude of nations shall be born. Abraham felt that God was referring to Ishmael. He did not see the possibility of him, who was 99, and his wife, who at this time was 89, giving birth to a child, because of course, Sarah had already passed menopause. So the Bible says that when God told Abraham that he will have a child with Sarah, Abraham fell on his face. Now, Abraham said, or made allusions, he inferred that with the statement after he fell on his face, he inferred that Ishmael should find favor in the sight of God, that it was it was more possible for Ishmael to be the father or the this the two through which Abraham will be, more, will be the father of a multitude of nations. But God told Abraham that the nations that will be born by Abraham will not come from Ishmael, but although he will make Ishmael the father of 12 princes, that is 12 princes will come from Ishmael, but the covenant he was having with Abraham will not be validated by the son Ishmael, but by a son that Sarai and Abraham were born. And God told them that this son should be called Isaac. This statement by God to the mind of Abraham was full heart. Now, the meaning of Abraham is Abraham is exalted father. Remember, I told you Abraham was 99 when God had a covenant with him. And God changed his name from Abraham, meaning exalted father, to Abraham. And Abraham means father of a multitude of nations. 
father of a multitude of nations. Now, God also changed the name of Abraham's wife from Sarai, which means princess, to Sarah, which means mother, of course, of many nations. Her name connoted the fact that she will be the mother of several nations. God said that they shall beget kings of nations. That is the union that they had that was fruitless for several years will born kings even in their old age. Eventually, the Bible says that Sarah was now with child and when Sarah was ninth and Abraham was a hundred years old, they had a son. But before this happened, the symbol that God gave to Abraham to validate this covenant was, was circumcision. Was what? Circumcision. Now, God told Abraham that to validate this covenant he was having with Abraham, Abraham needed to circumcise the male children that were bought by Abraham who were foreigners and the male children that were his offspring. So anybody in Abraham's household was to be circumcised. Circumcision means the remover, the what? Remover of the first king. To remove the first skin, first skin, first skin of the male genital organ. And this means that any child, any male child of Abraham's household that did not go through this process of circumcision, God said the person will be blotted out of his people. The person will not be a partaker of the covenant that God had with Abraham and the descendants of Abraham because that person did not fulfill or did not obey the covenant that God had with Abraham. Now, the instruction of God was simple. When a male child is eight years old, when a male child is eight years old, sorry, when a male child is eight days old, I repeat, when a male child is eight days old, the first king of that male child's the productive organ will be removed. Now, like I said previously, Abraham already had a child who was called Ishmael. He had this child with the aunt's maid of his wife, Sarah. Now, Abraham gave birth to Ishmael when he was 86 years old. 86. And so by the time God had a covenant with Abraham, when Abraham was 99, Ishmael was already 13. So Ishmael was circumcised at the age of what? 13. And remember, Abraham was 99 when this covenant was made between him and God. So Abraham at that time got circumcised. So it is safe to say that Abraham got circumcised at the age of what? 99. Now eventually, a child was born by Sarah. And this child was called Isaac in accordance with the instruction of God. Now, talking about the appearance of God, God appeared to Abraham on several locations. The first time that he should leave his city, Arab. The second time at Shechem, that he will give him the land. And the third time, when Abraham was 99, when God told him to walk before him and be blameless. Now, any appearance of God, when God appears in any form, or when a deity or the divine appears or manifests to anybody in any form, that appearance is called theophany. That appearance, the appearance of, of, of a God or a deity or the manifestation of a God to 
a person in any form. So when God appears to an individual, either in the form of a voice, for instance, God appeared to Samuel in the form of a voice when Samuel was still under the tutelage of Ella, who was the priest at Shiloh. Now, remember, God called Samuel on three occasions. And on every occasion, Samuel thought it was Ella that was calling him. Now, that call by God, calling Samuel, 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 that call is called Theophany. The call is called Theophany. Remember, the topic is God's covenant with Abraham. God appears in any form. If you remember, when God appeared to Moses, Moses was the son of a man called Amram. His mother's name was Jochebed. Remember the story of Moses when Moses fled Egypt and went to Midian in the land of the Midianites and eventually worked for a man called Jethro, who was also called Rehuel, and got married to the daughter of Jethro called Zipporah. Now, on one occasion, according to the Bible, when Moses was standing for the flocks, he had a theophany of God. And remember, God appeared in the form of a bunny bush. A bush that was actually burned, but was not being consumed by fire. That appearance is a theophany. Now, in modern times, people still contemplate on the fact that whether if you are not circumcised, you can still be a partaker of the covenant that God had with Abraham. Now, in the early days of Christendom, in the first 50 years after the ascension of Jesus Christ, now this period is called the early days of Christendom. There were several problems. Now, there were, this period was a period of, of communalism among Christians. Everybody at this time lived like they were members of one large community, one large family that lived in the same community. Now the Bible says that Christians were selfless at this time to the tune that everybody shared what they have to the extent that nobody was in lack and nobody had more than he needed. Now, but there were also several problems at this time. For instance, one of these problems was the, the cry by the Hellenist widows. The name Hellenist. It relates to anyone that is Greek. A Greek is an aborigine of the country called Greece. Greece is a, a nation of ancient antiquity. For instance, what we know as democracy today was dictated to us by Greece. Now Greece has its capital in Athens. The first people to practice democracy were the Athenians. Athenians. The Athenians are the aborigines of Athens. They practice what we call direct democracy. And another very popular city-state in Greece at that time, as it were. Now, the states of Greece, as, as it were, were called city-states. City, I think, state. Another very popular city-state was Part. While the Athenians practiced democracy, the Spartans practiced oligarchy, a government of the few. Now, talking about many things that the Greeks bequeathed to the world, to bequeath means to live. For instance, I have written books. When I leave this world, my books are still there for you to read. So these books I bequeathed to the world. Now, one of the other stuff, that the great spectator to the world is what we call the Olympic Games, a sporting fiasco that takes place every four years, that involves virtually every country of the world. Now, the different city states in Greece, 
were always at loggerheads. They were always in war. One of the wars of this time was the Peloponnesian War that was between the Spartans and the Athenians. Eventually, when this war came to an end, the, the, the city-states of Greece decided to unravel plans or unhead plans to ensure peace between them. One of these plans that ensured acculturation and collaboration between the city-states was a, a sporting game that took place at Mount Olympia. This sporting fiesta that took place at Mount, Mount Olympia among the different city-states gave birth to what we now know as the Olympic Games in recent times. Now, back to the crux of today's class. Now, the Hellenist widows, the Greek widows, who were amongst the earliest Christians, they cried foul in the early days of Christendom that in the sharing of food or in the sharing of what was needed by people at this time, that they were being marginalized. To be marginalized means to be kept aside or to be forgotten when bounties are being shared or when goodies, for lack of a better word, are being shared. For instance, one of the reasons why the, the Igbos decided to secede from Nigeria was because they felt that they were being marginalized, that they are not being carried along in the governance of the entire country. So, to end this marginalization, they decided to leave Nigeria to form their own independent state, known as the Republic of what? Biafra, although that was not um, achieved. Now, the Hellenist widows cried that they were not being given enough when the Christians were sharing stuff amongst them. And to solve this problem, a conglomeration of several leaders in the church, there were seven, they were known as the Seven Deacons was formed. Amongst them is Pemenas, Stephen, Philip, Cocos. Now, the cry of the shortage of food from the Hellenist widows gave birth to the Seven Deacons who brought this problem to a halt. They now supervised or oversaw the sharing of food among everyone every Christian. Are you following me? Now, the problem that existed in early Christendom that has a relationship with this topic of today is the problem of circumcision. Now, when there were new Gentile converts, when the Gentiles were beginning to give their life to Christ and accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, there now arose a problem called the problem of circumcision. Remember, the covenant that God had with Abraham was just for the Jews, the circumcision that was meant to, to take place among the offspring of Abraham was exclusive to the Jews. The Gentiles were not supposed to be partakers of this covenant. So when Gentiles became Christians, there now arose a problem. Whether should these Gentiles be circumcised before they can be accepted in the Christian fold, or if they should just be accepted without circumcision. I repeat, there was a problem in early Christian law. Whether the new Gentile converts should be received as Christians without circumcision, or if they should be circumcised before they are received as Christians. To solve this problem, a council of elders was inaugurated. This council of elders in the Christian community was known as the Jerusalem Council. I repeat, it was known as the what? Jerusalem Council. And the head of this council was who? Peter. And the verdict, that is the judgment of this council was that the law of circumcision should not apply in that period that God, Jesus Christ rather has already paid the supreme price so it was no longer necessary for Gentiles to be circumcised before they can be accepted 
in the Christian fold or in the Christian community. Eventually, the covenant between God and Abraham called the Abrahamic covenant. It came to, it blossomed with the birth of Isaac. Remember, Isaac was born when Abraham was already a hundred years old and his wife Sarah was 90 years old. Now, Isaac got married at the age of 40. Isaac got married at the age of 40. He got married to Rebecca. Rebecca herself was barren for 20 years. There's something we call evil patterns if you are, if you are, if you are religious. You know what they call evil patterns? Some kind of patterns that flow from one generation to another. If these patterns are negative, you need to break them in your own generation so that you don't, you don't transmit them or transfer them to subsequent generations. So it can be said that barrenness was an evil pattern in the house of Abraham. Now, Rebecca was barren for 20 years. It means that Eventually, when Rebecca put to bed, Isaac was 60. Because I told you, Isaac got married to Rebecca when he was what? 40. And Rebecca was barren for how many years? 20 years. Eventually, Rebecca gave birth to twin boys. The first of them was Esau, and the second was Jacob. Esau and Jacob were the children of Isaac. Two Isaac's marriage with Rebecca. There are certain salient points that you must take out of this class. There are certain important information. Firstly, Abraham, as he were, Abraham, was called by God when he was 75. And it is believed that Sarai, his wife, and Abraham lived in all of the childings. They were from all of the childings. All of the childings. And God told Abraham to leave his father's house and his possession to a land that he will show him. This land was the land of Canaan. Eventually, when Abraham got to the land of Canaan, the Canaanites still dwelt in the land, and then he moved to the east of Bethel, where he pitched his tent, where he stayed, and eventually from there he moved on to Negev. When God had a covenant with Abraham, changed his name from Abraham to Abraham, he was already 99 years old. And when he had his child with Sarah, whose name was changed from Sarai to Sarah by God as well, Sarai was 90. I told you, Ishmael was circumcised at the age of 13, while Abraham was circumcised at the age of 99. His son, Isaac, of course, was born after the covenant of circumcision, so Isaac was circumcised at the right time when he was 8 days old. That will be all for today's class. I will meet you in the next class. Thank you very much.